Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be going over five bust proof players that you must draft in 2024 fantasy football. These are five players that I believe do not have a chance to bust this season pause unless there is an injury knock on wood we don't root for injuries so we're talking about five players that i view as very safe for the 2024 fantasy football season but before we could get into things i would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on twitter please do so at Notorious FNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into five bust-proof players that you must draft in 2024 fantasy football. We begin with the first bus proof player, and that is going to be Derrick Henry, running back of the Baltimore Ravens, current underdog ADP, running back nine at pick 31.7. Derrick Henry last year in Tennessee was the running back eight in PPR and the running back 16 in PPR points per game, tied with B. John Robinson. Playing in all 17 games, he had 280 carries, 16.5 per game, ranking first at running back, 1,167 rushing yards, 68.6 per game, number two at running back. The targets are not Derrick Henry's forte. Getting 35, 40 targets would be good enough for me. I don't expect Derrick Henry to magically transform into Christian McCaffrey and get a gazillion targets every game. So 36 targets, 2.1 per game last year, 39th at running back. 28 receptions, 1.6 per game, number 36, 214 receiving yards, 12.6 per game, number 28, and 12 total touchdowns, sixth at running back. This was Derrick Henry on a Tennessee Titans offense that was floundering like a fish. It was rookie year Will Levis, and as a whole, the Tennessee Titans just were not very good last season. So Derrick Henry went from not necessarily the best situation. I wouldn't say that the Titans are the worst team on earth right now, but not the most ideal situation to now getting transported onto a team that is one of the most run-heavy offenses in the NFL. If they get to the five-yard line, I can almost guarantee you that they are going to run the ball four straight times with Derrick Henry. There's a guy that scored 12 total touchdowns last season, six that running back, and it would not be a shock to me at all if Derrick Henry eclipsed 18, maybe even 20 total touchdowns touchdowns and Derrick Henry is relatively efficient as well despite the fact that he is getting up there in age 10th in yards created 9th in evaded tackles 8th in breakaway run rate and 5th in dominator rating again I understand that some of his upside is limited by the fact that he just really doesn't catch passes and Lamar Jackson isn't necessarily a check down Charlie either right he doesn't just love to dump the rock off play in and play out Justin Herbert style. But what I do know is that on one of the most run-heavy offenses in the National Football League, unless there is an injury to Derrick Henry, he is essentially like wrapping a condom, a Trojan, a Durex over your fantasy football roster. Derrick Henry is an incredibly safe bet to finish top 12 at the running back position. And if the Baltimore Ravens are really popping off game in and game out and Derrick Henry is able to finagle his way into 15, 16, 17, 18 touchdowns, then Derrick Henry, even without being able to catch a bunch of passes, he could still finish as a top three running back, I'm very excited about Derrick Henry this year, and I view him as an incredibly safe pick. At number two, we got C.J. Stroud, quarterback of the Houston Texans, current our dog ADP, quarterback five at pick 50. Now, C.J. Stroud was a quarterback that really came out of nowhere last year, right? No one was really talking him up for fantasy football in the offseason, sure, he was a very high pick in the 2023 NFL draft, but that did not correlate to the way that fantasy football managers were thinking, right? Everyone was all excited about Mr. Anthony Richardson, and while Anthony Richardson was able to perform at a very high level for fantasy football when he was healthy, C.J. Stroud was actually the guy you wanted to draft, because not only was C.J. Stroud free in his rookie year, and potentially even free in two quarterbacks or super flex leagues. This guy was a top 10 quarterback in his rookie year. Quarterback nine finish and then quarterback nine in points per game. This was a rookie season where Tank Dell, I know he had a great season, but his season 
was cut short. Season was cut short. So he didn't even, CJ Stroud didn't even have his full arsenal out there for him. Now CJ Stroud is going to start the season with Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, and Tank Dell as his three starting wide receivers. One of the best trios, if not the best trio of wide receivers in the National Football League. Tight end, Dalton Schultz, also not a pushover. And I'm not going to sit here and give Dalton Schultz the gawk gawk 9000 special and say he's a top five tight end in the NFL. But in my opinion, he's easily top 10 or top 12. So CJ Stroud is in an excellent scenario to have yet another great season. They also added Joe Mixon, who can catch passes out of the backfield, and in my opinion, is better than Devin Singletary and Damian Pierce combined. So CJ Stroud is in a great situation to do even better than he did in his rookie year. I do not think that C.J. Stroud is going to witness or is going to have that sophomore slump. I think C.J. Stroud is going to go out there and dominate in his second year. 15 games played last year, 499 pass attempts, 33.3 per game, number 14 at running back, 319 completions, 21.3 per game, number 14, 63.9% completion percentage, 4,108 passing yards, 273.9 per game, number 8, 23 passing touchdowns, 4.6 passing touchdown rate. Passing touchdown rate is very important because if you are way above the five number, say you're at like 6.3, then I think that number is going to go screaming back down closer to five unless you're like Patrick Mahomes or something. The number was egregiously low, say 3.9. I would assume it's going to go up. 4.6 could easily go up for C.J. Stroud, especially now with Stefan Diggs there. Five interceptions, 0.3 per game, 35th at quarterback. And while C.J. Stroud is not Kyler Murray, he's not Michael Vick, right? He is not Lamar Jackson, a quarterback that's going to run the ball a ton. He still got 39 carries last year, 19th for 167 rushing yards, 21st, and three total touchdowns, 12th. You don't need C.J. Stroud to go out there and rush for 70 plus yards in a game and a touchdown for him to be successful because of how good the team is around him and because of how good of a quarterback that C.J. Stroud is. There are a lot of people right now that are saying that C.J. Stroud is a top four quarterback in the National Football League based upon just one year. Coming off the board is the quarterback five, and I feel as though C.J. Stroud is a very safe quarterback. Fifth in passer rating versus man. Third in passer rating versus zone. And then he was eighth in deep ball catchable pass rate. This is a guy that, again, in his rookie year, fucking blew my socks off, as the old heads would say. Right? CJ Stroud proved he could do it with less weapons than he had, than he has now, to his disposal. So I'm very excited for CJ Stroud with Diggs, with Dalton Schultz, with... Nico Cousin, let's go Bowling Collins with Tank Dell with Joe Mixon. I think we're going to get another great year out of CJ Stroud. I think we get a top five year, and I think he is going to be very reliable game in and game out. At number three, we have Alvin Kamara. Now, I will make a stance here. Not a stance, because I made a stance last year on Alvin Kamara, and it was flat out wrong. It was as wrong as it could be. I thought Alvin Kamara coming off of that suspension would start the season and maybe Kendra Miller would take over. Maybe Jamal with two A's Williams was going to take a nice deep cut into Alvin Kamara's touches, OJ Simpson style, RIP, and that was not the case at all. Alvin Kamara came back, was at a huge discount in fantasy football drafts, and despite the fact that I full-on faded him, he ended up being a monster. Like in Sully style, underdog ADP running back 17 off the board right now, pick 66.3, running back 11 in PPR, running back 3 in PPR points per game. Now, a couple of days ago, I talked about some players that I didn't like so much, some players that I was avoiding right now in fantasy football drafts, and Chris Olave was one of them because I worry about Derek Carr's ineptitude. I worry about if Derek Carr will be able to elevate Chris Olave to the next level when Chris Olave is being taken off the board as a top. 12 wide receiver. And while I do worry about Derek Carr, Derek Carr is, you know, he has enough brain cells to rub together to where he can dump the ball off a bunch 
to Alvin Kamara, right? We talked about how Lamar Jackson isn't necessarily this check down Charlie that loves to check the ball down a ton. You want to know who loves to check the ball down? Derek Carr. Alvin Kamara last season, 13 games played because of the suspension, 180 carries, 13.8 per game, number 29, 694 rushing yards, 53.4 per game, number 32. But Alvin Kamara's bread and butter isn't running the rock. It's catching a load of balls out of the backfield. Pause. 87 targets, 6.7 per game, number two, 75 receptions, 5.8 per game, also number two, 466 receiving yards, 35.8 per game, number six, and six total touchdowns, 24th. Now, in this Saints offense that I don't expect to be significantly better than last season, I don't know if Kamara is going to eclipse 10 touchdowns, if I'm being honest with you. If he got 10, that would be fine. I don't think he needs 10 touchdowns when he's getting 6.7 targets per game, 5.8 receptions per game, right? If he's able to just be sucking in balls like his name was Angela White, I really do believe that Alvin Kamara's upside is very strong. And the safety argument with a running back that is getting that many targets every single game, again, another player to me. All these guys just feel incredibly safe. Last season, Kamara was second in target share at the running back position and fourth in yards per route run. I get Kamara's getting a little bit older, right? Same thing with Derrick Henry. But as Drake would say, age is just a number. So I think that Alvin Kamara is going to be perfectly fine in New Orleans. The other running backs around him do not concern me at all. If Alvin Kamara stays healthy... Top 10, top 12, shouldn't be a shock. I mean, he was running back three in PPR points per game last season. So if he was a top five running back, would anyone be shocked? The answer should be no. If you guys have enjoyed this far, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. below down below. And if you have enjoyed this far and you are not new to the channel, make sure you leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. So moving to bus proof player number four, Calvin Ridley, wide receiver of the Atlanta Titans, the Tennessee Titans, underdog ADP wide receiver 37 at pick 66.7. Now, Calvin Ridley is a very interesting player because last year I was all over Calvin Ridley like white on rice, right? I was talking about how I loved Calvin Ridley in Jacksonville. I saw all these clips from preseason, all these clips of him in shorts from the OTAs, all that, and he looked Great, Tony the Tiger style, right? And then he has the season, and he definitely doesn't live up to my expectations. But even though he wasn't as good as I thought he would be, it seems like people forget what actually happened last season, and they just think now that Calvin Ridley is some bum. Now, we'll get to the fact that he's not on the Jaguars anymore. He's on division rival, the Tennessee Titans. But first, we'll just explain what happened last year. Wide receiver, 18 in PPR. Wide receiver, 28 PPR points per game. Again, based upon where you drafted him, he bent you over a table, right? But was he really that bad? 17 games played, 136 targets, 8 per game, number 14. Now, those 8 targets per game only turned into 4.5 receptions per game with 76 receptions, 23rd. 1,016 receiving yards, 59.8 per game, 24th and eight total touchdowns, 11th at wide receiver. This may have been the most quiet over 125 target, over 1,000 yard, and eight touchdown season that has ever happened. Because if you talk about Calvin Ridley with someone, they will have a sour taste left in their mouth. They will be pissed about Calvin Ridley because they overdrafted him last season. And I'm not faulting you for overdrafting him. I loved Calvin Ridley last season and I was wrong, right? But, and this is a big but, shout out to Kim Kardashian, 6.7 target accuracy, 51st, not the best, 20th in dominator rating, 8th in air yards for Calvin Ridley. Now Calvin Ridley signs the big contract, right? They whip out one of those huge checks and give it to Calvin Ridley, jackpot for Calvin Ridley. With Will Levis, with DeAndre Hopkins, Derrick Henry gone, Tony Pollard in, still have Tajay Spears as well, still have Chig at the tight end position. So while Will Levis, your guess is as good as mine how great Will Levis is going to be. Now, based on what I saw last season, I saw some good, I saw some bad. I'm not ready to just say that Will Levis sucks. 
I'm also not ready to say that I'm very confident, 100% saying that Will Levis is even good or average. But what I'm not going to say is that he's terrible, right? I'm not going to get on here and just pretend like what I saw last season was just nothing but bad, right? That this guy is the next Kenny Pickett, that this guy was Russell Wilson in Denver, right? I'm not going to sit here like Geno Smith last season. I'm not going to pretend or Daniel Jones that Will Levis is a certified bum, okay? Did I love what I saw every single game? Fuck no, baby. But do I hate it enough to where it would scare me away from Calvin Ridley? No. He's coming off the board as the wide receiver 37. He was the wide receiver 18 in PPR last season, 28 in points per game. Do I think that Calvin Ridley is going to stand atop of the mountain and scream like the Ricola guy, Ricola, right? And be a top 12 wide receiver in Tennessee? Probably not. But do I think that this is the same Tennessee Titans with Derrick Henry and Rabel where they want to run the ball a gazillion times? I don't necessarily think that either. I think that Calvin Ridley sits atop of this team in terms of the target hierarchy. I think he will receive more targets than DeAndre Hopkins this season, assuming that they both stay healthy. So I am going to be fine taking that shot on Calvin Ridley in the middle rounds. Could it completely explode in my face? Maybe. Maybe it could, but... That could be said about a lot of picks in fantasy football, especially as you get deeper and deeper into the draft. So I like the talent of Calvin Ridley. If Will Levis is just decent enough, I don't think DeAndre Hopkins is the same DeAndre Hopkins we're used to. So I really do think Calvin Ridley is the wide receiver one in Tennessee. Final guy to discuss here, we got Kyle Pitts, tight end of the Atlanta Falcons, underdog ADP, tight end six at pick 60.8. Now I know exactly what some of you guys might be thinking. Nick, I'm not drafting Kyle Pitts again, Nick. I've done it. Uh, how, how long has Pitts been in the NFL? Three years? I, 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 I've drafted him three different fucking times, and this guy sucks, Nick! You idiot! Yeah, I mean, he was he's really good his rookie year, but couldn't find the end zone. Last two years, not so hot. But now, the Messiah of the Atlanta Falcons has shown up. Now, I know a lot of people don't have the fondest memories of Kirk Cousins. Not a lot of people are willing to give Kirk Cousins the Gawk Gawk 9000 special and fondle his balls metaphorically, but I'm going to do that here because I think that Kirk Cousins will be able to elevate Kyle Pitts to superstardom. Kyle Pitts coming out of Florida, chomp, 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 was one of those guys that's talked about as a generational tight end prospect. The next Travis Kelsey, the next Rob Gronkowski, the next whatever elite tight end you want to talk about. The next third leg Greg Olson, right? And he comes out and he looks good. But he's not the guy that people think, right? He, he doesn't live up necessarily to the expectations. But his quarterbacks are guys like Marcus Mariota, Desmond Ritter, certified bums, certified fucking trash cans, Uber drivers in a couple of years, right? Bums. Now, if you're an Uber driver, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with driving for Uber, no free ads, but these guys don't crack it in the NFL. They're not starting quarterbacks in 2022, 2023. Kirk Cousins, again, is he going to come back and be the same Kirk Cousins? Who fucking knows? But as long as they aren't as, as long as he's not as bad as Desmond Ritter, Kyle Pitts is going to be fine. And guess who Kirk Cousins loves to feed? He loves the tight end. We saw TJ Hawkinson in Minnesota fucking feasting like Lizzo at a goddamn buffet. 17 games played for Pitts last year, tight end 12 in PPR, 16 in PPR points per game. He was the disappointment to me, to me, but again. I blame the quarterback. I'm not blaming Kyle Pitts. This is the guy that was 7th in contested catch rate, 4th in yards per reception, 14th in yards per target. Now, his numbers aren't necessarily the best because of the quarterback situation and because their head coach, Arthur Smith, was an idiot. Dunce cap type of guy. 89 targets, 5.2 per game, 11th. 53 receptions, 3.1 per game, 16th. 667 receiving yards, 39.2 per game, number 11. And three total touchdowns, 18th. I can almost guarantee you He's getting more than three touchdowns. I can almost guarantee you he's getting more targets, more receptions, more yards. Again, is Kirk Cousins Patrick Mahomes? No. Kirk Cousins is smart enough to throw the ball to Kyle Pitts a bunch, and I think Kyle Pitts is a very, very safe tight end. If you miss out on some of those elite guys like Kelsey, Laporta, some of those guys, Ray McBride, Dalton Kincaid, right? Still very excited about drafting Kyle Pitts. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you've ended up enjoying, make sure you guys hit one of these videos. 
that are on the screen right now if you haven't seen them and hit that subscribe button down below if you're new whether you are new to the channel or not make sure you guys leave a like on today's video love you guys all so much hope you have a great day and as always good